Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question, how do I solve two-step equations involving integers? So let's review adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing integers um, because that's gonna be a part of solving the equations today. So remember adding integers, if the numbers have the same sign, then you're going to add and keep that sign. So on this one, negative eight plus negative nine, they are both negative, so our final answer will be negative, and then I'll just add eight plus nine, which is 17. So I get negative 17. And then if we have different signs when we're adding, then we're gonna subtract and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. So negative 11 plus seven, negative 11 has a larger absolute value, so that means our final final answer will be negative. And then 11 minus seven is four, so the answer is negative four. All right, now let's look at subtracting integers. You can think of this as adding the opposite for the second number, and then we'll just follow the rules for adding integers like we did up here. So 10 minus 14, I can change this to adding the opposite, and now these have different signs. 10 and 14, 14 is larger and that has a negative sign. And then since these were different signs, I subtract and 14 minus 10 would be four. So 10 minus 14 is negative four. And then negative eight minus six, we can change this to adding the opposite. And now they both have the same signs. So my final answer will keep that sign, it's negative. And then eight plus six is 14. Okay, multiplying and dividing integers. If the signs are the same, then your answer is positive. If the signs are different, then your answer is negative. And you can use the Mickey Mouse to help you. For example, if you have a negative times a negative, your answer will be positive. If you have a negative times a positive, your answer will be negative. So negative five times negative eight means that I'm gonna have a positive answer. And five times eight is 40. And then 16 divided by negative four, those signs are different. I have a positive divided by a negative. So my final answer will be negative and 16 divided by four is four. Okay, so let's review the steps for solving two step equations. We need to isolate the variables like usual by doing inverse operations in reverse order. The steps are generally to undo the addition or subtraction with inverse operations to zero out the constant and undo the multiplication or division with inverse operations to eliminate the coefficient. So we will usually add or subtract and then multiply or divide, and we need to make sure that we are following the integer rules that we just reviewed when solving, and then we'll verify our solution. Remember, we were doing the one, two, three yesterday to help us figure out our plan to solve. We're gonna ask ourselves, what are we solving for? And then we're gonna list out the operations that are happening. And then we will list out the inverse of that. Basically, how do we undo it in reverse order? So let's start with number one and let's write out those three steps. So I am solving for x. What is happening to x? The first thing I see is that it's being multiplied by a negative five and then we are adding 12 to it. And now we're gonna undo that in reverse order. So the opposite of plus 12 is minus 12 and the opposite of times negative five is to divide by negative five. So now we have our plan and we can solve for x. So the opposite of plus 12 is to subtract 12. And 12 minus 12 will zero out and I bring down the negative five. And then 62 minus 12 is 50. I almost forgot the X here. Bring down the negative five X. Okay, then our next step is to get X by itself by dividing by negative five since it's being multiplied by negative five. And I get X equals 50 divided by negative five is negative 10. Okay, now I'm going to verify that this solution is correct. I'm gonna substitute in negative 10 for x. So negative five times negative 10 plus 12 should equal 62. Negative five times negative 10, a negative times a negative is a positive, and then five times 10 is 50. So 50 plus 12 equals 62. So I did this correctly. 
So I just verified that x equals negative 10 is the solution. So when I graph my solution, I'm going to put negative 10 in the middle. And then this is negative, so be careful about how you do your number line. Negative 11 is the number right below it, and then negative 9 is the number right above it. Okay, let's look at number two. I have x minus, or x divided by six minus eight equals negative 10. So I am solving for x. x is being divided by six, and then we're subtracting eight from it. And the inverse of that, to undo the minus eight, I'm going to add eight. And then to undo the divided by six, I'm going to multiply by six. Okay, so first thing I need to do, according to my plan, is add 8 to both sides to remove that constant. So I'm going to add 8. And I'll bring down the x divided by 6 and the negative 8 plus 8 zeros out. And then negative 10 plus 8, those are different signs, so I'll subtract and get 2. And then the 10 has the larger absolute value, so... I go with that sign, which is negative. So negative 10 plus eight is negative two. And now I get X by itself by multiplying both sides by six. Those inverse operations cancel each other out. So now X is isolated and then a negative times a positive is a negative and two times six is 12. So I get X equals negative 12. Let's make sure that this is the solution by substituting it in. So I'm going to do negative 12 divided by 6 minus 8 and make sure that it equals negative 10. Negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. So negative 2 minus 8 is the same thing as negative 2 plus negative 8. So those are the same signs. So I keep the sign and then add 2 plus 8, which is 10. So I just proved that. This solution does work, so x equals negative 12 is our solution here. And negative 12 will go in the middle. I'm going to put a dot on it since that's our solution. Negative 13 is right below negative 12, and negative 11 is right above it. Okay, let's look at number 3. I am solving for x. What is happening to x? It's being multiplied by a negative three and we're adding a five to it. So now I have to undo this. The opposite of adding five is subtracting five and then the opposite of multiplying by negative three is dividing by negative three. All right, so let's solve for x. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the constant plus five by subtracting five from both sides. This zeroes out and I bring down the negative three X and then negative 22 minus five is the same thing as negative 22 plus negative five. These have the same signs. So I'm gonna keep that negative sign and then I'll add 22 plus five, which is 27. And now I'm going to divide both sides by a negative three and negative 27 divided by negative 3 is a positive 9 because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And now I'm just going to substitute in this 9 and verify that it makes the equation true. So negative 3 times 9 plus 5 should equal negative 22. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27 plus 5. 5 equals negative 22. So these are different signs. I'm going to subtract them and I get 22. And then 27 has larger absolute value. So I'm going to go with that sign, which is negative. So I just verified that the solution does make the equation true. So our solution here is x equals 9. So I'm going to put that in the middle of the number line with 8 right below it and 10 right above it. Okay, let's look at number four. I am solving for x. x is being multiplied by eight, and then we are adding 10 to it. So to undo that, I'll go in reverse order with inverse operations. The opposite of plus 10 is minus 10, and the opposite of times eight is divide by eight. So there is my plan of action. 
So first thing we're going to do is subtract 10 from both sides. I'll bring down the 8x and 10 minus 10 zeros out. And then I have 2 minus 10 or 2 plus negative 10. So these are different signs. So I'm going to subtract. So 10 minus 2 is 8. And then 10 has the larger absolute value. So I'll keep that sign, which is negative. And then the last thing I need to do is divide by 8. And I get x equals negative 8 divided by positive 8 and negative divided by positive is a negative and then 8 divided by 8 is 1. And lastly I'm going to do is verify that negative 1, 4x makes this equation true. So 8 times negative 1 plus 10 equals 2 should be true. Negative or 8 times negative 1 would be negative 8 and then plus 10 equals 2. Negative 8 plus 10, those are different signs, so I'll subtract and get 2, and then 10 has a larger absolute value, so we keep it positive. So 2 equals 2, that means x equals negative 1 is the correct solution. So I'm going to graph this in the middle of my number line. Negative 2 is right below negative 1, and 0 is right above it. All right, number 5. We are solving for x. x is being divided by negative 7, and then we're adding 19 to it. And now I need to undo this in reverse order. So the opposite of plus 19 is minus 19, and the opposite of dividing by negative 7 is multiplying by negative 7. So here's our plan of action. Let's follow it to solve for x. So first thing I need to do is remove that plus 19. So I'm going to subtract 19 from both sides. The 19 minus 19 zeroes out. So I'm left with x divided by negative 7 equals I'm going to change this to 18 plus negative 19. So those are different signs, so I'm going to subtract 19 minus 18 is 1. And then 19 has the larger absolute value, so I'm going to keep that sign, which is negative. Okay, so I subtracted 19, and now my last step is to multiply both sides by negative 7. Those inverse operations cancel out, and I'm left with x equals a negative times a negative is a positive and then one times seven is seven. So I get x equals seven. Now let's verify that x equals seven makes this equation true by substituting it in. So I'm gonna do seven divided by negative seven plus 19 and make sure it equals 18. A positive divided by a negative is a negative and then seven divided by seven is one. So negative one plus 19 should equal 18. These are different signs. So I'll subtract 19 minus 1 is 18, and then it stays positive since the positive 19 had the larger absolute value. So I just proved that x equals 7 makes the equation true, and now I can graph this. 7 goes in the middle of our number line. I put a dot on it for the solution. 6 is right below it, and 8 is right above it. Okay, number 6, I am solving for x. The closest thing that's happening to x is it's being multiplied by a negative 2. Make sure that you include that sign in front of it. Multiplying by a negative 2. And then you need to look at the sign directly in front of this number to know what is going on. We have this negative 12 attached to it. So you could put it as plus a negative 12 or you could just think of it as subtracting 12. So either way, I know I'm going to have to make a 0 with this negative 12, and the opposite of negative 12 or minus 12 is adding 12. So that'll be my first step, and then I'll have to undo the multiplying by negative 2 by dividing by negative 2. Okay, so now that we have our plan of action, we can go ahead and solve for x here. So the first thing I'm going to do is undo this negative 12 by adding 12 to both sides. 
that zeroes out and I bring down the negative 2x, don't forget that sign with it, and then 16 plus 12 is 28. And then my last step is to divide by negative 2 and I get x equals a positive divided by a negative is a negative and 28 divided by 2 is 14. Let's just make sure that negative 14 makes the equation true by substituting it in. So I'm going to do negative 12 minus 2 times negative 14 and make sure that it equals 16. So negative 2 times negative 14 would be a positive 28. I have to do that multiplication first before I can add or subtract. So negative 12 plus 28 should equal 16. These are different signs, so I'm going to subtract 28 minus 12 would be 16. And the 28 had the larger absolute value, so I keep it positive. So I just proved that x equals negative 14 is the correct solution. So negative 14 will go in the middle of my number line, negative 15 will be right below that, and negative 13 will be right above that.